Okay, we are now going to move swiftly on. Speaking of great content that will benefit you for the year ahead, it is a real pleasure to introduce to the stage a gentleman who has joined us many times before, and he always brings something interesting, something cool, something involving new technology. And today's session is all about, it's going to be a demo showing how CRM has fundamentally changed forever. The session is called Come see some cool things, which could be a, a description of all of his sessions here, but he's going to show you something really cool today. So my dear friends, please join me in giving a very warm, loud welcome to the co-founder and CEO of Fast Track. Give it up for Simon Lidzen. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. What, a, what an intro. <laughs> Look at you, Shane. Great. Thanks to see. Good. Thank you guys for coming. This is really cool. Nice to see everyone. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Fast Track. My name is Simon. In case you haven't met me before, and um, yeah, we Fast Track. I hope I hope you've seen us around a little bit. Otherwise, I might have to have a little bit of a serious conversation with Louis, my CMO, because I think we've been at every trade show and every conference that there is to be to in the last two years. So um, yeah, but I want to tell you a little bit anyway. So Fast Track has set out to digitalize the iGaming industry, and we are currently in the process of building the first industry first self-learning engagement platform. And we are meeting with hundreds of operators every year, okay? And they tell us the most fascinating stories about how they are going to conquer the world and how they're going to differentiate and how they are going to win the game. And the thing is, like, everything boils down, every conversation boils down to the same thing by the end of the day, is how are we going to create meaningful and long-lasting relationships with our customers and players? And that's, that's really what we are here to do. This is what we are in the game to do. And we call that one-to-one -one experiences. That's what we refer to it as. And how we're going to be able to scale with self-learning, AI, through one-to-one -one experiences. So that's what we're building when we're doing a self-learning engagement platform. And I mean, personalization and one-to-one -one and the focus on this, I mean, come on. This has been going on for like 12, 50, uh, for, forever. I mean, when I was working on the operator side, this is a very long time ago, but 12, 15 years ago, surely we were talking about this. We were talking about this every day. It was in the board packs. I mean, I look at, I'm sure there is a lot of leaders from different organizations here in the audience today, I mean, whether it's for founders, or CEOs, head ofs, and stuff like that. This has been featured in the PowerPoints that we've been bringing to the board for so many years now. And I feel the pain. I, I really feel the pain. It's not moving nearly as quickly as we hoped it would have been. Because it's much harder. It's much harder than we thought it would be to orchestrate all of this. The landscape is very, very complicated. It's hard. And I mean, you probably a lot of operational people in the room as well sitting in the audience today, whether you work in CRM or casino teams and sportsbook teams and so on. And I mean, I feel your pain more than anyone because the thing is, it's been really clear. Everyone is telling us and me the same thing, right? We just want to do more experimentation. We want to work with our data. We want to get more time for the creative process and come up with new creative concepts that we want to ship out. But there is simply no time, right? It's just so many deadlines to meet. The execution takes forever. It's just is just not happening. So we have a lot of pain over there. And our providers, I'm sure there is a lot of game studios in the room today that are doing amazing content, rolling that out. I have frequent conversations with some of the leading studios. And you guys are struggling, OK? You're struggling to get through the door to speak to someone on the operator side that can help you, help you promote your games in the right way. And so I mean, there is a lot of that. Like, everyone is really want to move this forward, right? And the solution to all of this, how we're going to get there, is by speeding up the process. We need to make shipping new experiences and shipping new sort of, um, yeah, player experiences in general much, much faster. And we're going to do that by investing more in our infrastructure and in our technology, because that's where the secrets are. And when we are doing that, it we have learned by now that this is not a waterfall process, okay? This is not something we're going to step up and do, and we're going to do a run one project, and then suddenly, you know, we're personalized, we're good, one-to-one, -one, everything is done. No, this is going to be an iterative process. It's going to take time. We actually don't know what the final product and the final answers looks like in terms of customer engagements. That's why, that's why we need an iterative process. We need to fail fast, and we need to find ways to sort of get back on track. 
But we are, it is quite painful. It is, it is going very slowly because we only get to cherry pick these very, very few ideas that we work on every time. So fail faster, learn faster, grow faster. That's really the name of the game. And I don't know if you know this, but the average operator that, that are not working with fast track today, I know this because I speak to them, they spend 30 to 60 hours to turn around any new experience that they're launching, like if they're doing a campaign. It usually takes the team collectively between translations, between people coming up with content, writing briefs, you know, regulatory compliance checks, responsible gaming involved, all of that stuff typically takes between 30 to 60 hours um, to do in an operator right now. So, I mean, you get the picture, right? It's like taking a long time. It's really difficult. So what I'm going to do is like show you because that process goes a lot faster for the fast track partners. And I want to show you a little bit what that looks like today and, and a few key reasons why. So I'm going to step straight in and I'm going to show you sort of a live, uh, live demo recording, but I'm going to talk over it. <laughs> so we're going to log into the platform right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to build sort of a, a, an engagement for you so that you can, you can see what it looks like. Yeah. Maybe. There we go. Something is moving. Um, so we're opening up the system and we're going to create a new activity. So I'm going to stop at certain places where I feel that there is interesting things to talk about. So the first thing that happens here is that we're just going to create a reactivation campaign for a Wednesday. And what you can see, you see that little bubble up in the top right corner? It says smart time of the day. This is just one example of where we are using intelligence and our singularity model, as we call it, to create one-to-one -one experiences. So there is a data model that is looking at every single player in your database, and it's actually identifying what is the right time of the day to send this type of engagement. As we move on from this, um, you're going to see another box that is coming a little bit further down, which is also huge in terms of productivity, especially if you have a multi-brand operation. So what we're doing now is highlighting different skins, uh, which we call player origin solution. And as far as I'm concerned, I believe that is the only solution that is currently supporting any sort of multi-brand management from a central system right now. This is super sophisticated. So what's happening behind this is that you have been able to tell the platform exactly how all of your engagements will happen, how it, how it will look like for each of the different brands that you're running, but you can still create one activity, and that saves so much time when you're running this. Uh, we're going to click again. So we're going to scroll down. We're going to pick a segment. So this is just going to target inactive players. And then we're going to come on to something really cool, AI generated. So now everyone has some experience. And I'm sure most of the operational teams today are using you know, ChatGPT and similar sort of language models or generative AI in some way to support their workflows. Now, the secret in integrating this type of technology and making use of it in the platform it comes from the middle layer. It's what you're putting in. It's the prompt engineering, as we refer to it from a tech perspective. It's what we're putting in that pudding in order to make the recipe work so, so that we can actually submit instructions to the generative AI and it can produce something that is of value, that is in context of what we're doing, um, whether that be in now creating a campaign and writing content for that or whether, and it should understand all of the different things. You can tune the model to do that. So we're going to click again. And here we're going to do an example. Write me content for a campaign to reactivate churn casino players. Give the user 10 free spins as soon as they log in. And then a match deposit of 100% up to 100 euro on the next deposit. Be personal in the messaging, include emojis, use best practices, and, and so on. We submit this one. And then it will, the, the system will then have a contract together with the language model. And then it will produce this. And it will show you firsthand what that looks like. And it goes very fast, only in a few seconds. You can then play around with this. You can submit it and tell it to do an A-B test, and you can say what you want to test. You can also submit um, and ask it for translations, and it's going to translate your content straight up for you as well. So this is super handy, OK, when you're like working with that creative concept and working things out. But I'm going to move even further. When you click here and you create that campaign, it's done. I mean, this activity is actually set up straight in the system right now. It has the email. It has the SMS. It had a site notification that was presented on the screen. And it's all programmed to understand that this one is supposed to fire at this time, and the, and the site notification is supposed to fire when, when the player logs in. Now, moving into uh, another example. So in some cases, you may not want to use that type of technology to generate your content. You write it yourself, but you still could take advantage of the translation. So we have here a, um, 
translation uh, module that is integrated as well, which is straight under. You just sort of bulk select how many languages that you want to use. And, and, and this is very, again, we've added a lot of stuff in the middle layer, which is how the currencies and, and how everything should be formatted, what words you want to use. You can put any tuning that you want into the platform to make sure that it's behaving in the right way. Um, we go inside the SMS here. I'm going to show you something that is the AI toolbar, which is another thing that we have uh, launched in the beginning of this year, which includes, you can highlight text anywhere and opens up a little pop-up. And it might be a little bit hard to see, but it's, it's essentially a helper box. It has some different buttons here, suggest, enhance, add emojis, um, shorten, and spelling, or do custom. And what I want to do in this case, it will understand the context that the bubble is showing. So right now I'm inside an SMS and I highlighted the text message. And all I want you to do to, for example, bring this down to get the cost down, I want to do one SMS, not three SMSs. I click the shorten button and it's like instantly going to give me a shorter uh, version of the same SMS without losing context. All of this saves so much time. We're going to go into the email right now and see some other examples on how that AI box is used up. So right now, um, I'm scrolling down to the email body and I'm going to highlight the text over there and I'm going to use this feature called uh, the emoji. So this is, this is an example on how you can spice and make it a bit more playful and put that into the text, um, and which has been very appreciated. And then I was showing you this custom box as well. What is a very common use case when it comes to running campaigns in iGaming is that you have bonuses that you've run in the past, but you need to repurpose those bonuses. You need to do like, whether it's a pancake day or it's a Halloween, and you need to be able to do that really easily. So here is an example on how we used a custom instruction to make it Halloween themed. And then it took the same content, it repurposed it. It might need a little bit of touch up, but it's really, really good. And you can continue to tune that to make sure that certain things are not touched with. Another way to use a similar feature is suggest. So if you wanted to change around your wording and you say, OK, I'm going to highlight my, my, my title of my email and I'm going to find, I want suggestions on how that can be variants put out. That's, that's what just happened there. Coming out from, from this, it highlights another feature right now, which is called the auto login. Auto login is used by quite a few of our partners and it's really cool. It creates a secret link. All right, so it embeds a secret link. So all of the links that are leading to the website of the operator is automatically, it's a magic link, just like Slack. When you get one of those emails and you click that email and you, you come logged in state into the website. This is super cool because it helps the conversion and engagement rates on, on the campaigns. The last thing I want to show you here on, on this particular part of the demo is uh, the channel prioritization. So again, we have this little bubble appearing in all sorts of places in the system which is called a singularity model. And right now I clicked that and, and what it did was that it's using a data model. It recognizes that I had both an email and SMS and if you had a push notification, it would understand that as well. And I used that button to essentially prioritize now. So now it's not gonna send an email, SMS and a push notification to all players, it's gonna pick one of them. So that's the data modeling doing its job. That's, that's the singularity model. So all of this is building towards making it easy to ship campaigns and also making it easy to try new ideas and, and, and build one-to-one -one experiences. Now I'm going to do a little bit break. We're going to go into a different part of the system. So I'm going to stop right here for a bit. So that first part is really about showcasing a couple of key features on how Fast Track, what Fast Track is doing in the space of making it easy to ship things. Now we're going to talk about something that's taking it to the next level. You've heard me talk about the singularity model before, and this is really, really cool. So now the next generation of CRM is not going to be that you're setting up one activity and you're targeting a specific segment in your database. The future of CRM is that you are going to create collections of campaigns and you're going to use an algorithm that you're going to build yourself in how the platform is going to prioritize what is sent to each individual player. And I'm going to show you right now how to do that in the platform. So the singularity, you open that from the left-hand menu, and we're going to go straight into collections. And inside collections, it's going to give me a few of them and show me on the screen. And here we're going to go into churn prevention. So that's going to be the example that I run today. Churn prevention collection is now going to be topped up. So I've already prepped that in the system before I came in here. Tons of different, different offers that I'm ready or different types of content and experiences that I want to ship to my players when I'm coming closer to having a player that is probable of churning. So here is 25 different experiences that, the, that is at the platform's disposal in order to send out to the player. 
Now, all of these have been QA, they've been checked, right? So they are, they are ready to go. Now, what you do is that you go into the next tab in the system, you go to models, and then you build your own algorithm. This is really cool. So at the very first step, you put your restrictions. You're telling the model, OK, what is absolutely forbidden to do? Because you're going to have a lot of those. You might have certain jurisdictions where you cannot target with certain bonuses. You saw me <laughs> translating a, a, a or, or a reload bonus over to a Swedish translation before. I hope that Swede lives in a different country because I cannot send that in Sweden. But that would be a perfect example of how you can use the restriction model to prevent that. You can use the restrictions and eligibility model to also prevent frequency of communication, right? To make sure that you're not sending players too much uh, on the same day or the same week. Um, and the few things here that has been highlighted, so uh, it checks for opt-in channels that it's played previous products that I'm promoting, that it's matching the player language so that there is a translation available. Um, and what else has been selected here? We have the maximum allowed offer value. This is really cool. So we've got data models that is essentially costing up an entire campaign. And then you use that to make sure that the, the, the maximum allowed value that you can send to any given player, it's not exceeding that. So you're giving it a lot of restrictions. Then you go down to the fun part, which is the scoring model. This is where we're building the algorithm for how it's supposed to prioritize in terms of what campaigns will be sent. And we're doing a lot of work in this space, and this is super exciting. So in this particular case, we have added in a number of things. We have preferred game types, most played products, predicted deposit brackets, um, preferred offer types, release mechanisms. We are meta-classifying this content so the platform understands these things. So then it's essentially looking at the player profile and the player behavior, and he's saying, okay, this guy is a casino player. He hasn't really engaged that well in Sportsbook in the past. He tends to play, you know, the, 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 the very fun, high volatile slot games. And, you know, if the content includes that type of stuff, that will be prioritized for what is communicated. And it's also... The, the models that are used there for the predictive deposit bracket is working phenomenally well, and especially that in combination with a bonus type, because some people, they don't respond well to free spins, some people don't respond well to deposit bonuses, some people just respond well to positive communication, whether it be reminding them that we have a very exciting ways of, you know, sort of responsible gaming features, whatever it might be. This is the type of segmentation, this is how it needs to happen in the future if we're going to scale this from a one-to-one -one experience perspective. So this is super cool. So I take this model, and the last thing that I'm going to do is just show you how easy it is to then take that collection and put it into action. So we're again going to create, we're going to publish this one, and we're going to create an activity. And in this case, we're not going to do an activity that sends on a specific day. We're going to tell it to do an automated activity that is based on churn prevention and when players are showing a high probability of churn. So we got these type of models in the system as well that will identify that. So you will see now that the trigger is a high probability of churn trigger. And then it's going to go down and charge up all of the active players in the database because we want to see, we want to move them, continue to have them retain the activity uh, and not lose them to churn. And after we've selected this, there's going to come three buttons here and we're going to press the one-to-one -one experience one. And you're going to see how that looks like in the front end. So here we go. We're going to click the one-to-one -one experience button. And then my collections are going to appear. All of the different ones that I've already built and prepared and published. And I picked the churn prevention one because that was the one I wanted to demo. And there, you're gonna, there you go, you're going to have 25 different campaigns. You don't need to do anything from a segmentation perspective. It's all in real time, going to figure out and self-learn on top of that in terms of which of the campaigns are actually the most, uh, most performing one. You get a preview over here that the audience that you've selected and targeted, so in this case, active players, that you have a good distribution of campaigns, that things are working in the right way and that you have enough content to, to provide. So in this particular case, it tells me that I have an excellent scoring in terms of that. So this is the future. This is how it's going to look like. And this is going to be a transition now. We're going to go into, we're going to have to sort of stop working in a transactional manner where we're sending one campaign to one group of users at any time. We're going to start transitioning in to this reality now. 
And it is really exciting, the type of numbers and improvements that we see on the CRM plans already now is super exciting. And, and I can't wait to see what that's going to help. So if you want to come over and chat to us and have a look at this in more detail, and maybe you want to have a tech talk with me and you want to know exactly like what happens underneath, this, uh, underneath the hood, I'm more happy to do that. Just then come and see me at stand or, or my team. I've got loads of people here, so it's going to be great. Thank you so much for, for taking the time, guys, and listening in today. Thank you. Awesome. Wonderful stuff. Simon Lidden, fantastic.